Greetings, pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today I got something really special for you. We're going to be making teleporters. So the request came in in order to create a teleporter pad. You step on, you press a key, and you warp across time and space. And what we're going to be doing is doing all of that, including a sound effect, and we're going to be animating sort of the camera uh, field of view in order to create that stretching and snapping through time kind of effect, okay? So, first up, you'll find either in the description or on the website, there will be the assets that I'm gonna show you that I've created for this effect. First of all, we have this teleporter pad model. I've created this for you, so go ahead and download this and import it into your scene. I'm gonna drag and drop one into the scene, and I'm gonna zero it, zero, point five, zero. Now, 0.5 is my base floor because the room here has been created with uh, some boxes. All I have so far in the, in the scene are some boxes, some lights you can see here in my room sub-object, and then a first-person controller. If you're not familiar with the first-person controller, you can get that through Assets, Import Package, Characters, and then you will end up with this standard Assets folder. In there will be Characters, First Person, Prefabs, and I just dragged one of these into the hierarchy. Okay, so we've done that, we've done this, now let's add a material to this, and materials, I just right click, create, new material, and I've done that here, this is my teleporter material, I drag and drop that, now this one I already have set up, but the textures, which are right here in the textures folder, these will be su supplied for you as well. So all I did here was apply the albedo texture, I'm actually not using the metallic because I'm not happy with it yet. So I just put a metallic of 0.65 and a smoothness of 0.5. Assign your normal map. You may need to click the button to say fix. Assign the height map and I put a value of 0.025. And then I assign the emission, put it to one, real time global illumination. That's for these four lights here. They just kind of glow a little bit. Just for something a little fancy. Okay, so now that we have that, how do we create the actual teleporter effect? Well, we need a couple of things. First thing we need is a way to tell the script, hey, I'm in position and I'm ready to teleport. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a cylinder to this. So let's go ahead and go game object, 3D, cylinder. I'm going to zero it to the world. And then on the Z, I'm going to change that to uh, zero to the world, sorry. And then we're going to take the cylinder and we're going to click and drag and put it as a child to the teleporter. Now we can put 1.15 on the Z, and that will snap it up into position. The reason it's 1.15 in Z and not Y, some of you might be thinking it should be Y. Y is up and down in Unity. Yes, but if you notice the rotation, cylinders come into the world automatically rotated uh, when they're a child of this object because this object is rotated. It's confusing. But anyway, 1.15 on the Z, and now we're all set. Now, however, this cylinder is solid at the moment, and that's not what we want. We want to be able to step into it and have that affect us. So we're going to select the cylinder, and under the capsule collider here, the is trigger, I'm going to check that to true. That means now I cannot collide with the cylinder in the traditional sense. I can walk through it, and when I do so, it will trigger an event, and that's what we want. Now, let's go to our materials and make two more materials. I just called mine teleporter beam A and B, and all these are is a standard material with the rendering mode of fade, and then I've changed the color, and in the color, if you click the little box there for color, this will appear, and I've changed the A to 100, that's the alpha, to make it semi-transparent. So if you see if I drag that on there, there we go. Now we can see through it, so that will help us with just being able to move around and make sure it's all working. All right, so most of this is done, so now we're going to go ahead and start the actual scripting. So in your assets here, I'm just going to right click and say create C sharp script and let's call this teleporting. Okay, very good. And now I'm going to double click it and this should open it in mono develop. All right, sorry about that. We had a small problem there. So I'm going to double click on teleporting and this should open it in mono develop. That is mono develop coming up right now. There we are. Okay, so now we're going to start with the scripting. Uh, first of all, yes, I'm this type of person. I have to have everything lined up vertically. There we are. All right. So first things first, we're going to need a bunch of handles to things. And for those of you not familiar with scripting, 
a handle is sort of like a pointer to something. My explanation is always, uh, if you're in a room full of people and they're just all random people to you, but then your friend shows up and says, hey, did you know that guy over there is a celebrity? Well, you didn't know he was a celebrity until now, but now you have a pointer to that guy. You say, that guy there in the corner is a celebrity. I now know something about him. That's sort of an example. So what we're going to do is create a couple variables. So just follow along here, and I'll explain what these are. So public variable means it can be accessed anywhere in Unity. Uh, float is a type of value. It's like 1.01, 1.03, not 1, 2, 3. Those are integers. I'm going to call this init FOV so for initial field of view. Then I'm going to create another one, public float, if I could spell, float of final FOV. So put these two variables together are, these are the initial field of view for the camera and the final FOV, FOV field of view for the camera, pardon me, and we're going to animate sort of between the two, okay? Now we need a private bool of beam me up set that to false to begin with. So beam me up is a bool, a boolean value is a true false. That's all it can be, is true or false. And we need one more private variable, private audio source, and we call this teleport sound, okay? So these are our two private variables, and the boolean, as we talked about, is a true false. The audio source is a type of file. This is an audio source, so we can point to an object and say, play your audio source, play your, your sound, okay? Now we need a few more public variables, so let's keep going. Public float speed, and I'm gonna set that to 10.0 F. So this is a float value, so you have to put an F there. So 10.0 means 10.0, it's 10 solid, but that's how you would do a solid number in float, okay? Then we have another public. This one's gonna be a transform of beam to here, just like that, capital T, capital H. Uh, so beam to here is the position that we want the teleporter to beam you to when the teleportation is complete. And a transform is a position in space. So when you make a box and you put it to zero, 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 that box's transform is now a type called a vector three, but it is a zero, 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 okay? So another public here of game object and we're gonna do underscore player. So this is a handle to the player so that our script knows what the player is. And I think that's all we have for variables at the moment. Okay, so those are all of our variables. So now, in the start, start happens right away as soon as we start the game, okay? So first thing we need to do is say, tell me about the player. So I'm gonna do game object, capital G, capital O, dot find object with tag. And then in parens here, I'm going to put the word player in quotes and finish it with a semicolon. So this says set our underscore player variable equal to a game object in the scene that has a tag of player. Okay, so very important. Let's minimize this for a moment. Let's check our FPS controller. And I've already done this from a previous session, but this would be untagged to start. So you're going to change the tag to player. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, let's go back to, into here, and what I'm gonna do is say teleport sound is equal to game object, lower game object now, dot get component. I'm gonna do one of those, in here without, without quotes, audio source, okay? So we're getting the component of the audio source of this object. And we're saying that, com that component is equal to what we're going to call teleport sound. All right, one more. Init FOV is equal to, we're going to grab the camera.main and the field of view property for that. So now, whatever the camera is set to, you can set it however you like for whatever your game is. And this will grab that value right at the start. Okay, now, on to, we're going to actually skip update for the moment. And we're going to come down here and create a new uh, function here. So this is going to be on trigger stay. Very important, put it just like that. And now I'm going to explain what this does. So for a trigger, think of a trigger as like a laser trip wire. As soon as you touch it, it does the thing that it's programmed to do. However, you can also have on trigger exit 
and on trigger stay. So on trigger enter would be like a laser trip wire. On trigger exit would be like some games where you go into a room and as soon as you leave that room the next event happens. So that would be an on trigger exit. On trigger stay is more like if, if you're familiar with um, the domination game type in, in Call of Duty. There's a spot where you have to stand on that spot and you stay on that spot for a few seconds and then you capture the spot. Well, if you leave at any point before you've captured it, it stops. So that would be on trigger stay. We have to stay in that area. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. So what we're gonna say is if input dot get key up key code dot t. So I'm gonna say if we've already established that you are that you are on the trigger and you're staying there. Now I'm saying if you now press the T key on the keyboard, what are we gonna do? Well we're gonna make beam me up equal to true. So, so we're gonna do an actual teleport. And we're gonna do teleport sound dot play. So play the sound that we've set up as a teleport. The reason we do this here and not here is because of the nature of how quickly all this happens. Because we're talking about update happens once per frame. And if you have an average of, say, 30 frames a second, then this is going to happen 30 times a second. It's really fast. So because of that, we have to kind of preemptively, we play the sound technically before we do the actual teleporting. But to the user, it looks like it's all happening at once. Okay, so let's jump up to update and make it all work. So in here, I'm going to say if beam me up. So if we've triggered an actual teleportation to occur, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to do a couple things. First, we want to say camera dot main dot field of view equals. So now here's where we're going to change the field of view over time. So we're going to be using the math f. So math functions dot. We're using something called a lerp. So a lerp, as you can see here, linearly interpolates between A and B by T, which T is time. Okay, so we're gonna change from one value to another over time. That's essentially all we're doing. So in here, I'm gonna say camera.main.fieldofView. And we wanna move to final FOV. And we move by speed times time.delta time. Okay. So now, I'll explain just to make sure we're all on the same page here. So what we're doing is we're moving from our initial value to our final value over a course of time. And our speed determines roughly how fast it happens, but because this is happening 30 times a second, the time that delta time helps us sort of translate that into time in seconds. Oh, there you go, see, uh, versus just happening 30, you know, this would be 10 in 30 frames, so it would happen less than a second and we don't want that. Now we want to do one more thing is we want to say if the camera dot main dot field of view is greater than or equal to our final FOV minus 10.0F just as a little bit here. So what this is saying is we want to make a change to the camera once we've completed the effect we need the camera to return to its normal field of view. However, we can't just do that by saying equals because it, the way linear interpolation works, it will never equal, or it will, but after a huge amount of time. So we're gonna have a close enough value. So this is our close enough value is our final minus 10.0F, okay? So here we're gonna say, if we are done teleporting, being me up equals false, then camera, dot main dot field of view let's reset it to our initial FOV and now that we're done teleporting programmatically uh, we're actually going to make the transform so transform dot position equals beam to here dot position now what this says it's a little confusing but because the way coding works we're saying if we've completed the effect, right here we're doing the, the camera effect. And as soon as that's done, or just about done, all of this happens at once. So effectively we get the teleport and it looks 
like it should. So that should be everything. Let's go ahead and build. Just click up here, build, build all. I get one error. This is something else. See if I close that. We're back here to teleporting and there's no errors with teleporting. So let's go back to Unity. Okay. So here we are in Unity. Now I'm going to select our cylinder here and I'm just going to click and drag teleporting to it. There we go. Now we've got several things that show up here so we have to sort of connect things but this will work really well. Let's go ahead and add component, audio, audio source, and in this first clip here, audio clip, let's click that and choose teleport sound. Now you notice it says assets scene, these are all the sounds that are in my scene, and you'll notice the teleport sound is right here. This will also be provided on the website for you. So that's good, now we have to set all this up. Our final, let's change that to 160, the initial, we don't have to touch, it's going to read it from the camera. Our speed is fine. Our beam to here, we're going to play with that in a moment. But the player, if we click and drag here, the first version controller, and just drop that in the player. There we go. Now, if you notice, I did not choose the beam to here because I'm going to copy the whole teleporter. So let's move it over. I'm going to move it to negative 5.5. I'm going to hit control D and I'm going to move it and I'm just going to set this here 5.5. .5. Okay, so now we have two teleporters. So the first teleporter, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change its name to teleporter uh, space A and hit enter. Now I'm going to choose the second teleporter right there and change its name to teleporter B. Now before we go any further, let's go into our materials our teleporter B material we made earlier and I'm going to drag that onto here. Now we have a red and blue teleporter. Go ahead and save the scene. Let's make sure that you know we can tell the difference between these. Now if we go into each teleporter under this beam to here, what I'm going to have to do is get the cylinder from the opposite teleporter. So I'm in A right now. So I have to click and drag B to the beam to here for A. And I'm going to select B and click the cylinder from A and drag that to here. And now, file, save, we should be all set. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna hit play. And we're in the, oh, we made one mistake. Let's go back, one mistake. Uh, on your cylinders, uncheck the play on awake. That's why you heard the sound and nothing had happened yet. Okay, save scene, there we are, okay. So I'm in the world, and I'm going to step onto the blue teleporter. And now stepping on the blue teleporter, face forward, press T. And you saw, you heard the sound behind us. I like that, you can change it so that it actually plays from the player, but I, I made it so that it plays from the thing you teleported from, because that makes sense. You're traveling faster than sound, you know? So anyway, I'm on the red teleporter, and I can prove that by backing up. There I am. Stand on the red teleporter, hit T, and I'm across the room back and forth. And because I teleport directly to it, I can just keep hitting the button, which is kind of fun. Um, the other thing is, you do face the way you're facing. So if I'm facing that teleporter and I hit T, I'm now facing the wall behind the blue teleporter because I was facing that wall. For instance, if, I'm, if I face away from this and hit T, now I'm facing the blue teleporter. So I turn around, hit T. Oh, my cursor is off the screen, sorry. I'm facing the red teleporter. So that's one thing you can also take as a challenge to see if you can fix that, is you can make it such that whatever direction I'm, I'm facing, when I teleport, you know, I want you to snap me to face the way that I just came from. Maybe you want that. I don't know. So as always, I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed. Keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.